Okay, in an earlier show, we talked about the necessity to get some quality paintbrushes. And what we have here, these are made by a company out of Denmark called Warhammer, and, uh, or the, the Army Painter, I'm sorry. And, and this is their Warhammer edition brushes. Now these are natural sable brushes. Um, and a pack of these three, I think were about 10 or $11. So you can see right here that this is, this, they call this one the intense detail. Now, what we're going to do today is we're going to paint the pilot of the P-47, and I want to show, I want to bring your attention here to this diagram. Now, they, they suggest that the, you paint the pilot uh, with a dark brown jacket, brown gloves, headphones, boots, and goggles are brown, uh, yellow life vest, white, flat white straps, and a silver buckle, right? So what I've done here is I've represented all the colors that you're going to need. Now, I'm, for the purposes of YouTube, I'm not able to use a reproduction of an image, but on my cell phone, I have taken a, a picture of, of a pilot from another um, uh, modeling site and used their color version to kind of see if, what colors what I would like prefer to use. You know, sometimes the manufacturer... Uh, the model maker will recommend colors that may not be historically accurate. So what I have e exchanged uh, is for the pilot's clothing, for, for his legs, he's going to be wearing khaki pants as opposed to what the uh, man model manufacturers recommend. So again, we have our sprue cutters here, our dedicated sprue cutters, and what I'd like to do is show you how to keep as many parts on the sprue tree as possible because it makes it a lot easier to maneuver uh, when you're painting and so what we're going to we're basically going to cut out the pilot section using the sprue cutters and you can see how quick how m much easier this is than an exacto knife um, you know you're going to be spending a lot of time sawing and cutting if you're if you're using an exacto knife and because uh, there's no way to really do that nicely but uh, And this, this is a good teaching moment. <clears throat> see how that small, see how that wheel fell off? That wheel could easily get lost. And that's why I recommend you go ahead and go out and get these, these connectors, these bamboo alligator clips. Uh, um, you know, go ahead and clip that up. And that way you'll never lose it. You put it back in your box and, and you'll always have it. Now, we're working with enamel paint so we can use water uh, as our basic solvent. And uh, what we have here is a little bit of, this is Mr. Pencil, this is brush cleaner. And I always like to have that handy whenever I'm working with, with paints like this. So again, what, what, I, what I'm going to use is uh, Tamiya, Tamiya Khaki, this is X, XF49. These are all acrylic paints. And the beauty of, of acrylic, of course, versus enamel is you don't need paint thinner, which is uh, extremely volatile and it's noxious and so I prefer to use the Tamiya and they make a very good the paint you'll find covers really well <clears throat> now um, this is a, probably a little bit more advanced than, than you would have but I have a paint mixer here and I like it because it allows me to get a good distribution it allows me to mix that paint make sure all the pigments are thoroughly um, dispersed in there, and you can see how see how clean clean and easy that is with water. 
how much, I mean, uh, acrylic versus enamel. Now I know the, there's a lot of model purists out there that will tell you that you, you must absolutely use enamel um, when scale model building, but I, I find that to be, uh, I think to me, the technology is caught up where, caught up sufficiently where you can do a good job without having to uh, resort to just enamel. Now, <clears throat> I like to use, I don't know if you can see me, but I'm using a headphone, I mean a headset with some magnifying lenses with it. Um, I find that when you're doing detailed work, it helps you to really see all the nooks and crannies uh, of, of the, the, the item that you're going to paint. And like I said, we're going to paint this pilot's uniform khaki. And using that brush, we're just going to get a look, good coating on the paint, uh, I'm sorry, on the, the uh, pan portion. And there's no science to it, you know. You, you don't want to have enough paint on your brush where it's going to run, but you, you certainly want to make a good coating everywhere. And of course, the boots will be, we'll paint those black later. But for now, we're just concerned about getting uh, a good coating of khaki on the uniform. Now the, the pants are going to be different than the jacket is dark brown so we, we have a specific we have a particular leather color that we're going to use there but the the khaki and again this is I think more historically accurate but uh, you you can use your discretion you can paint these dark brown if you if you choose. Uh, I just like to show that there's some difference between the color of the boots and the gloves and, and, and whatnot. But this, the uh, on on these, this is a 148 scale model. This this P47N model, and <clears throat> the pilot is usually going to be your toughest, most fine work uh, throughout the whole model. You'll find the cockpit area is is uh, a lot more detailed than other areas that you'll paint. So it's good to go ahead and get that out of the way early so you don't have to worry about that later. The rest of it is a lot less particular. Now, <clears throat> that's what I consider to be a good coating. We've got it everywhere and again because it's connected to the sprue tree after it dries and we separate it and we get ready to glue, it's likely that we're going to have to paint uh, that again. So that's, but that's a good, uh, good first step. And you can see this is time consuming. That's just one part. Now I'm going to, of course, clip it. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and clip the uh, sprue. And using my coffee can. I think I've showed you this earlier, but what I've done is I've taken a coffee can, uh, filled it with water, and it makes a good holder so that you, your parts don't uh, don't get mixed, mixed up when you're, when you're doing, uh, moving around. So now <clears throat> that we've used that color, and that's that's another thing, it's a good, good time to tell you this, in scale model building you're going to be switching out colors all the time. You're going it, to, it's amazing how little paint uh, is necessary for just one application. So every time I do that, I like to go ahead and use my uh, my uh, paint my paintbrush cleaner, my pe Mr. Pencil. Put a little bit of water on it and uh, kind of make it a little solvent. But what you want to do is get that liberally on your brush and uh, clean that residue off. You want to get that excess paint even though it is acrylic uh, this paint has a tendency to to uh, clog up your brushes and so you just want to always start fresh whenever you change colors and this paint clean this paintbrush cleaner makes it very easy to do that okay so now that we've we've done that we're going to go ahead and switch colors quickly and like I said, when you're doing scale model building, you got to move fast because you'll you'll spend a lot of time on little things. Let me go dump this. Right. So this is leather. This is uh, the tester's uh, leather color. This also is acrylic. 
and uh, we're going to go ahead and repeat the process. We're going to go ahead and mix it like we did last time. Now, now that we know <clears throat> that the the uh, pilot's uh, main jacket is going to be a leather jacket, it's a brown bomber jacket. Uh, we're going to go ahead and make that brown versus the khaki. And I know that sounds very, very insignificant, the difference. But for as you, as you'll find in this field, um, there are people who will comment and they'll go, "That's not histor historically accurate. That could have never happened." And you'll find a lot of those people. The lighter colors will be dominated by the the darker colors, of course. You just want to take your time. And again, what I said, <clears throat> like I said earlier. This portion is probably going to be the most difficult aspect in the of middle your of that. Model. I, I very subtly, probably didn't see it, but I went to the insane detail on the uh, very fine brush. And again, don't scrimp on your brushes. This is one area where I don't recommend trying to save a buck. You can. There's a lot of areas where you can cut corners, but as you can see, this fine work really requires quality brushes in order to get into these these areas there's just no other way that you're going to be able to do it and have a viable make a viable attempt at it if you're uh, uh, scrimp you know working with some substandard equipment so don't scrimp on brush brushes it, and it doesn't make sense you know for a good quality brush like I said you got, I got these three for about eleven dollars uh, natural hair brushes you know for eleven bucks that's that's unheard of that's a good good rate okay and I got them from Amazon so they, they'll ship them right to you now this is gloss black and uh, we get into the old argument <clears throat> over whether gloss black versus uh, flat black everybody in the uh, scale model building uh, hobby has their preference now I prefer gloss black because I figure if you're going to spray like most model builders would do after they're finished they're gonna put a, a coating of some kind of uh, future or some other gloss type applicate application I figure why not go ahead and if you're go if you're going to put a coating of glossy uh, overcoats overspray on it why not just work with gloss to begin with so for boots and gloves and things of that nature typically I will just go ahead and use gloss black um, I'm sure the purist will have some argument against it but uh, I always find if you're going to make it glossy ultimately anyway why not just use the gloss to begin with so and I just find that it looks better for me that's my aesthetic personal aesthetic but uh, may not be yours so but of course we will use that for the boots and gloves and uh, let's go ahead and do that okay we're gonna do a switch out here we're gonna go to yellow now this is a uh, humbrol paint yellow I like Humbrol. I like their bottles. It makes it really easy to open. It's a very vibrant yellow too, and it looks like it's already really good mixed up. I don't know if we we'll need to. Might just use a toothpick there. Good consistency for acrylic paint. All right. Let's put that life vest on there. So you can see the areas that we missed with the leather. We'll have to go back over that. But the good news is, look at the goggle area. Just a little dab of silver, and that's going to look great. By the way, nobody does gloss white like testers. Acrylic gloss white. Oh my god. The best ever. You know, it's funny, in uh, scale model building, you'll find some paint, Tamiya, for example, I don't think anybody does silver better than they do, a chrome silver, but uh, for white, nobody beats testers, acrylic gloss white, as far as its consistency, it's, okay, hopefully you've got a, a good idea, I mean,
Okay, so hopefully you got a good idea of how intricate this type of work is. So um, I, what I'm trying to impress on you is don't take, I mean, take your time. Don't, don't rush it. It's going to take a lot of work to get something that's going to look something like that. I wish I had a better camera so you could really see the detail in there. I don't know if you can. Okay, let me hold it up here. 